Moving into the drama of the week, uh, Michael Saylor feeling some heat after he called anyone who takes self-custody a paranoid crypto anarchist if you hold your own keys, which is kind of a hot take for an industry that literally invented and has imbued deeply into its culture the idea of Self custody, Ryan. What was your reaction when you when you heard this? I can't believe a big, like a notable Bitcoiner bi- actually the, said this. The Bitcoiner's Bitcoiner. <laughs> you know, you know what? We should just play the clip so people can decide okay. for themselves. Here's Michael Saylor being interviewed and in what he says. If there is more Bitcoin, Bitcoins held with these third party custodians, what risk does that pose? Having greater supply held by fewer large institutions. Does that increase the risk of seizure and confiscation like we've seen with gold? And is that not exactly what Bitcoiners don't want to happen? No, I think it's the opposite. I think that when the Bitcoin is held by uh, a bunch of crypto anarchists who aren't regulated entities, who don't acknowledge government or don't acknowledge taxes or don't acknowledge reporting requirements, that increases the risk of seizure. You have an OG crypto community that's very hardcore about it, but if you look at where all the money is, 99.9% of the money is actually in the traditional economy. If you consider the Great Depression, I mean, people thought that their gold was safe in banks until the executive order of 1933. So we're not entirely safe. I mean, I know that's kind of a wild thing to suggest may happen again, but history does repeat itself. So yeah. people's Bitcoin wouldn't be entirely safe. It's people not say that, but that. mostly it's mostly it's paranoid crypto anarchists that say oh that. Oh my God. Okay, Yikes. because it's, it's, a, it's a myth and a trope that goes on over and over again. But first of all, he didn't really seize the gold. People voluntarily turned in the gold. They didn't go and kick in everybody's door, arrest them, shoot them, and take their gold. That never happened. Well, they did make it illegal and basically send people to prison if they didn't turn in all yeah. of their gold. And this was a, a federal law, uh, you know, at, at the time. This is um, pretty crazy, honestly, coming from yeah, Michael Saylor, Sa- who's who's uh, the Bitcoiner of Bitcoiners, at least according to some. So let's let's talk about the reaction. So this is Cena from 21st Capital saying this is a terrible look for Saylor to become a shill for the government and banking system and call all true Bitcoiners paranoid. Saylor is on a mission to relegate Bitcoin into an investment pet rock and halt its usage as a currency. Spooky vibes. It's interesting too. This this comes off of news we were talking about uh, last week where, of course, Saylor is amassing all of this Bitcoin. It's well known that he has dollar cost averaged his way into MicroStrategy holding like over 1% of all Bitcoin supply. And he was talking about launching a, a MicroStrategy Bitcoin bank, essentially, on top of that. Well, that is not bankless at all. That is all Mm -hmm. custodied. And so, like, maybe, maybe, David, Michael Saylor is doing what's in Michael Saylor's best interest and not in the interest of this decentralized bankless movement that most of us are here for. There are two pillars of Bitcoin that you do not violate. One, 21 million units, which Michael Saylor loves and knows and espouses. And the other, is self-custody, strong property rights, permissionless custody over your assets. You have to have both. The reason why, like, actually those fit very well together is because the inability to inflate Bitcoin is property rights over the amount of Bitcoins that you have. 100%. But you also have to match it with actual real property rights, the ability to hold your own Bitcoins. And Sailor just denying the other half, the other yin to the yang of of Bitcoin system is kind of just like an affront, an offense to the idea of Bitcoin. It's sacrilege, which all the takes on the OGs repeated out this week. Eric Voorhees says, Sailor is getting trashed for the self-custody comment as he should. Vitalik said, I'll happily say that I think Michael Saylor's comments are batshit insane. He seems to be (laughs) explicitly arguing for a regulatory, a capture approach to protecting crypto. Eric Wall, I thought, put this meme together that I think encapsulates everyone's ideas. This meme format is the guy riding the bike who sticks a stick through the bike's pegs and then falls over. Uh, Churchill sees the gold. Roosevelt sees the gold. Germany sees the gold. Japan sees the gold. Russia sees the gold. There's nowhere on earth you could have kept your gold. Uh, And then now in 2024, Michael Saylor says, law no one is going to kick down your door and seize the gold that never happened uh <laughs> fucking paranoid cyber hornets uh yeah so kind of kind of a hot take so th- there is actually some uh people saying actually this is this is positive ev from sailor sailor is being listened to by the status quo by the incumbents by the banks by the regulators and this is like a good look for bitcoin if you have like mr bitcoin saying like oh yeah you know the old system is like totally fine and good like bitcoiners got to pay their taxes it's so totally okay to custody it with the system as like 
a prisoner's dilemma strategy of, of trying to cooperate with the system to make Bitcoin less sketchy. That's kind of the defense uh, of Sailor, which I think kind of there's there's something there. Uh, is that what Sailor is actually doing or is he actually, you know, should we take him at face value? I kind of think we should take him at face value. Yeah, personally, I don't think there's anything uh, like there. I think that this is just a little bit of Sailor bootlicking. Um, mm. th- this is the, the comment Mitchell Hol- Hoddle says, Sailor's willing to stomach criticism from the maxis in order to make Bitcoin less sketchy and provide cover for institutions. That was basically the case. And he was talking about like, crypto holders not paying their taxes. Like b- self-custody has nothing to do with not paying your yeah. taxes. Yeah, It just has to do with like not having a third party have all of the, the like own all of the fiat and all that you get is not you it's i mean it's the entire purpose for for bitcoin for crypto for for going bankless i gotta say it was uh relieving to see some of the crypto ogs you know like come out and uh, and say hey this is not okay by the way sailor uh, kind of retracted a little bit of this at least he had a tweet statement i don't know if you saw that we don't have it in the, no, in the no, show but he was just basically like i support the right of all bitcoin holders to uh, like be self-custody he didn't exactly apologize for what he said he just sort of I guess, reiterated that he is uh, supportive of self-custody. So maybe he's trying to walk that back. But Bitcoiners should be wary of this type of thing. Everybody in mm-hmm. crypto should be wary of this type of thing. Culture matters. Did you see <laughs> Did you see this, uh, you know, farce uh, satire book title? Oh it's called the, the Compliance the... Standard. <laughs> Michael Saylor's Safety. biggest fans. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than the Bitcoin standard. I, I think there's an element of that here. Um, fun fact, David. You ready for mm-hmm. this fun fact? I am ready. Right now, balances of Ether uncentralized exchanges are lower than Bitcoin. They continue to be lower than Bitcoin. So of all of the Ether that's out there, only 10.4% is inside of centralized exchanges. Uh, For Bitcoin, that number is actually 15%. Okay, so 10% for Ether, 15% for Bitcoin. And you can see kind of like a flippening that has happened here over time with uh, Ether started out with more uncentralized exchanges. And now, you know, where we are at this point, 2024, is less in centralized exchanges and more in in uh, like decentralized exchanges and L2s and kind of like the bankless world. So does this mean, David, that Ether, the asset, the monetary unit is more bankless than Bitcoin? You ready for me to, sorry, douse some water on this? Sure, go ahead. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this chart, we need this to be fact-checked by the listener, because um, I, I, I think this is true. Uh, the percentage of centralized exchange Ether that they go and stake, like Coinbase, CB, ETH, or anything staked by Coinbase, oh, that's included here is, not, is not reflected oh, in this chart. They and got so, us like, with the staking. Yeah, they got us, yeah so there, there's an anomaly there where any, if Ether is being staked by a centralized exchange, it doesn't count as being on the, central, uh, on the, on the um, centralized exchange. I think the uh, whatever metric we're using, and we should get like kind of the right metrics for this. This is a really important dimension of, of is, crypto, yeah. mm-hmm. which is percent that's decentralized, the percent that's in you know, like held by by code and not by mm-hmm. third party institutions and intermediaries. Whether this is Bitcoin or whether this is Ether or any any asset, it's all about going bankless. It's all about decentralized finance. To continue leveling up your crypto game, then you need to get on the Bankless newsletter. It's the world's most popular crypto email and is completely free. Just click below to sign up.